Good afternoon, friends out there. It's actually a very sunny afternoon here. Today we're going to do the part two of our contraception video. Last week we spoke about contraception. Before we go ahead with today's video, we cannot ignore the events that have been happening in the past week, two weeks, the world over. By now I'm talking about the George Floyd event and the protests taking place all around the world. Now there are some people who are criticizing Nigerians for joining in the protest. They say, okay, these things have been happening on a regular basis here in Nigeria and we haven't protested so far. And they think it's hypocritical to join the Americans to protest over George Floyd. I don't think so. I think anywhere is a good place to start. Extrajudicial killings should not be encouraged anywhere in the world, and especially when it's, it targets a particular race. And so we are joining our voices with all the voices all around the world there, condemning the extrajudicial killing of George Floyd. We can see protests currently going on all over the world in France, in Argentina, and the people are bringing up issues. And even in Nigeria here, we have the issue of UWA and then the university students and all of this extrajudicial killing is wrong. Ah, uh, please, if you're a, a first man, a policeman listening to me, your duty is to protect the citizens, not to kill them. We police our friends, we are told, let us see you being our friend, let's see you defending us. We should not be trigger happy. We should stop the brutality, police brutality. We're joining our voices with voices all over the world to say no to police brutality. And then rape. Even, that, even though that's an issue, we're going to deal with another day because we want to speak about it in detail. But I would not lose this opportunity to say to our young men out there, you're more than this. We are created higher animals. But I don't know why we're trying to identify with the lower animals. Human beings are higher animals. We have intellect. And it's our own intellectual. It is really based for a man to see a young girl and... If you are sexually attracted to the young girl, there's nothing wrong with that. What you should do as a human being, as a cultured human being, is to approach the girl. Delay your sexual gratification until such a time as you can woo this girl, get her to accept you, and to give her consent to sex if she's of age. If not, there's going to come another girl along, more beautiful, stronger, more intelligent. So why would you become barbaric and begin to rape a girl? It's absolutely unacceptable. It is, uh, uh, I do not even, I can't find the right adjectives to qualify this. Young men out there, you are mad enough. You are handsome enough. You are intelligent enough. If you find a young girl, you are attracted to woo her, and if she accepts you and consents to sex, you can go that way. If she doesn't, another girl will come out alone. Please, please and please, let us stop the break. Stop the killing. Stop saying to the world, I'm not mad enough. Stop saying I'm barbaric. Stop saying I'm an animal. We are better. We are higher animals. And, you know, it's not the time to throw blames around. But it's also an opportunity to say to the parents out there, we need to teach our children delayed gratification. Unfortunately, my generation is a generation that is saying to their children, I want to be a good parent. We want to be good parents, but sometimes we are doing it wrongly. We think providing everything our children need is a way to be a good parent. Responding to their whims and caprices, that's not the way to be a good parent. Sometimes we have to intentionally deny our children just to teach them delayed gratification. So they learn to wait. Let them learn that they cannot get everything they want just when they want it. That way we can, it's a good way to, a place to start to begin to avoid uh, uh, this place like we've seen, killing, raping and killing. We should have self-control. And one way to teach your children self-control is to delay them certain pleasures that they might be asking or requesting for. It won't kill them. We were denied and we never died. We learned. We learned self-control. We learned to delay gratification. So that's one good tip, parenting tip coming out there. We'll still be doing more videos on parenting. Watch out. But uh, before we take this too far, let's go back to our video on contraception, our message on contraception. So last week we spoke about... Um, some myths about getting pregnant, such as when you're breastfeeding or when your menstrual period has not returned after uh, delivery, you cannot get pregnant. We dealt with that. We talked about male contraception and we saw uh, the condom. We saw also uh, the coitus interruptus, which we said was not really a very good enough method. And then we saw vasectomy. Uh, it's also a good time to mention that vasectomy is a permanent uh, 
contraception method for men. That means when you do a vasectomy, you don't intend to have a child again. So if you're still productive and you, you still want to make babies, don't go with the vasectomy method. And then we talked about the natural contraceptive methods for the women. And we said that uh, natural methods will not work if you don't have a regular cycle. And generally, there are lots of uh, allowances for failure with the natural methods. And we promised that this week, we're going to be speaking about other contraceptive methods that uh, are more reliable for women. We're going to start with the spermicides. Our discussion should take uh, this pattern. We talk about how the method works. We talk about uh, its effectiveness. We talk about uh, the side effects and then uh, how, who should not use. There are some methods that are not really for everyone. So our first method we're talking about are the spermicides. Spermicides are actually chemicals that, uh, when inserted into the vagina, can help you know block the, the cervix area, prevent the sperm from entering or they thicken the discharge from uh, the cervix. So it makes it very difficult for the sperm cell to swim through the cervix to go fertilize the egg. This is how the spermicides work. And there are a number of spermicides out there. We have the vaginal creams, we have the jellies, we have the vaginal fin, we have the sponge. Uh, for all of these spermicides, they are more effective when we use them in combination with another method like uh, the diaphragm, you know, the cervical cup. On their own, they are not too effective, not 70% effective which is good enough. And they also have uh, their own side effects. Before we get to the side effects, whichever spermicide, when you see that method, you choose to use. Please follow very strictly the instructions on your leaflet that was enclosed in the way you ever you purchased it. Because if you don't follow instructions, they are likely to fail. So we have different uh, spermicidal methods and different ways of using them. Make sure you adhere to instructions, for instance, the vaginal sponge, you can stay, you can insert it, you know, and it can last for 12 hours. Within the first six hours after inserting the vaginal sponge, you can have sex as many times as you want to, but you must stop after six hours. And then you don't take it out immediately. You have to wait for six hours after the last sexual uh, encounter before you can take it out for it to be effective. So like we said, make sure you read the instructions and stick to the instructions. Now some of the uh, side effects you could get with that is you could get irritation, irritation. I remember that spermicidals do not protect you from sexually transmitted infections. Actually, they could actually make you more um, uh, exposed. They could expose you because they could thin your lining and then allow the uh, viruses to permit uh, to permit more easily. So they don't protect you from sexually transmitted infections. Okay, so let's go to the next method. This one is actually one of the most common uh, contraceptive methods out there. The hormonal methods, and there are also different types of hormonal methods. For the hormonal methods, we have the pill, we have the combined pill. Usually, the pills, how they work is uh, they contain hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Now, these two hormones are naturally occurring hormones uh, produced in our system uh, that regulate the whole reproductive uh, process, you know, and uh, through a feedback mechanism. So what these pills do is that they are a chemically prepared um, uh, vari variation of these natural hormones and when we take them in, they either prevent ovulation from occurring or they thin the uh, uh, uterus lining to such an extent that when there's a fertilized egg, it cannot get implanted or they also tick on the cervical uh, discharges. It makes it difficult for the sperm cell to swim and get to the egg to fertilize it. Now, how many hormonal methods do we have out there? We said there are several. Back to the pill, we have the singular pill, the pill that contains only progesterone, progestin, and we have the combined pill that contains estrogen and progesterone. Many people pre prefer the combined pill because it's more effective, but with the presence of the estrogen comes more side effects. Okay, we have the pill, like we said, the pill is usually taken every day at a particular time. Either and the entire month or for 21 days, you know, and if you're taking the one that goes the whole month over, you may, you may interrupt your menstrual cycle, or otherwise uh, you can have a regular menstrual cycle if you take the 21 day pill. The pill is very effective actually if it's taken properly, but you must make sure also that you follow the instructions on the leaflets as enclosed in the leaflets within, uh, within the pill where you buy it, because the tablets may not be exactly identical, they are the active tablets and the inactive ones, 
and then there's you know there's an arrow that shows you how to take you must follow the arrow you must start taking according to directions when you miss a pill you also are briefed so when you miss a pill you could use an emergency method or you, you could use a condom if you you miss your pills and all that so the pill is effective and then we also have the implant that comes as a rod that's implanted in your arm and this discharges uh, progesterone gradually so you can have the, uh, the implant uh, it lasts for about three years once every three years and a lot of people you know go with this method it also has reduced risk of um, side effects because it does not contain uh, estrogen okay so we have uh, the vaginal uh, ring as well which is sat in your vagina and then it's a contraceptive method we have the skin patch that's given once a week for three weeks and then there's one day free all of those are hormonal methods and then we also have the IUD that also contains a progesterone that's also a method then we have the injectables the injectables and injection you take once every three months several types of hormonal methods out there and they are actually if taken very well hormonal methods are 99 to 100% effective but in reality, we have uh, lapses in, in taking, especially the, the, the pills, that makes them less effective than that. They are a very good contraceptive method. However, there are some people that should not take, they use the hormonal method. It's also not too good for people who have irregular cycles. And then also for women who are over 35 years old and they're overweight and also smoke, yeah, there's an increased risk of uh, the side effects we're going to be speaking about. So if you're at that age, you should be, probably would want to consider another type of contraceptive. And then also, there's an increased risk of uh, high blood pressure. So if you already have a history of high blood pressure, you shouldn't take uh, the hormonal method of contraceptive. And also, if you have any history or risk of cancer, uh, you shouldn't take the hormonal contraceptive. And then if you have headaches that are localized to a certain area, migraines and stuff, you shouldn't take the contraceptive. The contraceptive also is not for people who have uh, um, the artery uh, uh, thrombophlebitis or thromboembolic uh, disorders or you know, disorders that have to do with blood clotting. If you have any of those disorders, don't take the contraceptive. And also if you have any heart uh, diseases or heart disorders that have to do with the valves, you shouldn't take the hormonal contraceptive a lot. Yes, so before you take and choose your method of contraceptive, please have a discussion with your doctor, with your gynecologist, even maybe with your general practitioner, and make sure that the method you choose is appropriate for you. Discuss every new underlying sickness you might have with your gynecologist before you decide on which method to use. So all of these people I mentioned, please stay away from the pill and uh, from the hormonal methods. And like I said before, if you're over 35 years of age, if you're overweight and you smoke, there's an increased risk for the heart uh, uh, diseases, for the heart attack and um, uh, the stroke with you, increased risk of uh, high blood pressure and all of that. So let's talk about the side effects of the pills. Now from what we've discussed on who should take and who should not take, you must have had an idea. So the side effects of the pills include high blood pressure, like we've spoken, cancer. However, it's important to note that um, the risk is very low. You know, the risk is really, really low. So, but there's a risk of this. There's a risk of um, migraines and headache. There's a risk of high blood pressure, risk of cancers. There's a, a risk of uh, nausea and vomiting, especially within the first two cycles of the pill. Uh, there's also a risk of, uh, you know, those that have diabetes shouldn't even take, first of all. And so, these are some of the risks that we have with the pills. If you, if, if you want to take the pills, you have to consider there's a small chance of you de developing all of these increased risks to stroke and increased risks with um, heart attack, but really, really small. So that's it about the hormonal contraceptives. And uh, when you stop taking the hormonal contraceptives, they might still work for about 12 months. So you might still not ovulate for 12 months after having stopped it, after having stopped the hormonal contraceptive. So for women who, you know, you're taking the pills and then you get married and you're worried about why you've not gotten pregnant immediately, it might be as a result of the hormonal contraceptive. Depending on the individual, their effect may be sustained for up to 12 months after you stop taking the pill. That's something to think about as well. Now, away from the hormonal contraceptive, we go on to the more permanent methods of contraceptive. 
the intrauterine device. We actually mentioned this. There are two types of intrauterine device. That's the progestin intrauterine device. That's an intrauterine device that also contains the hormone progestin. They are inserted right into your womb, and you will need um, an expert to a gynecologist to insert it for you right into the womb, and then it leaves a thread. So for you to be able to monitor whether it's still there or if it's not there. And so we have the progestin and then the copper IUD, intrauterine device. Both of these devices, I think they are the most reliable um, contraceptive method they could pick and they are relatively long term, long term but reversible. For instance, uh, you can have the progestin intrauterine device when it's inserted, it can last for between 5 to 10 years and the copper intrauterine device could also last between 8 to 10 years and the comfort with this uh, method is that once a doctor gets to insert it, you don't need to do anything again, you don't need to remember to take a pill daily. However, from time to time, you must check to ensure that the thread that you know, sticks through your vagina is still there because there's a risk in the, this method of it being uh, expelled whilst you're contracting during menstrual period, it could be expelled alongside the menses. There's also a risk of uh, it uh, uh, getting lost in the uterus and implanting itself somewhere else. The risk is uh, 1 in 1,000 women. So each time you notice that the thread is not sticking out, you better go see your doctor to find out if it has been expelled because if it's been expelled, it will not work. And if it has also gotten lost in the womb, it will not work. So if you use the IUD and you find out that the thread is not sticking out, please go see your gynecologist. And also, the thread, people worry about the thread. The thread will neither hurt you or your partner, so there's nothing to worry about. Like I said, these are long-term contraceptive methods but they are reversible. That is to say, the very day you take off the IUD, you can get pregnant from that. In fact, I have another experience to share, but maybe we'll save that for another time. So once you take off the IUD, make sure you replace it immediately if you're not planning on getting pregnant. Away from that, we'll go to the diaphragms. This would have come earlier, actually. Just like the men have the condom, the women have the diaphragm and the cervical cup, actually called female condoms by some people. This is inserted right high up into the vagina, you have to insert up and then backward for you to be able to insert this by yourself. You might need some knowledge of your, your female anatomy, so it's better for you to go uh, meet with a uh, nurse part to teach you exactly how to use it. This is one of the reasons why women really don't like using the diaphragm or the cervical cap. Now this usually inserts some minutes or so before an encounter. And yeah, you can leave it there and take it off after the encounter, at least some hours after the encounter as well. It's not too popular because the discomfort of having it uh, is not as easy to use as the male condom. So many women don't like to go for it. And then the final method we'll be discussing today is tubal ligation. Now this is the permanent contraceptive method for the woman. That means to say if you're done with reproduction, you have as many kids as you intend to have and you're very sure you would not want to have a baby again you can go have a tubal ligation now the tube that is usually uh, cut and then uh, you know tied is the oviduct that's the duct through which the uh, sperm cell travels to make the egg for fertilization and after fertilization is the same tube through which the egg cell, the fertilized uh, egg this time we travel back to the womb to be implanted. So when this cut, you know, and tied, it means the sperm cells cannot get to uh, the egg cell. And also, if there's a fertilized um, uh, egg, it cannot come and be implanted in the womb. Very effective. Just a small incision, you know, on your uh, the womb area to cut the tube and tie. The risk is low, and then with that, you are as free as a bird forever. But remember, if you're going to go for a tubal ligation, it's not reversible or it's not easily reversible. So you've got to take uh, a second thought, to think twice, or to take a long thought, a deep thought, whichever, whatever, before you use this method. I believe that with this, we've been able to provide general information to guide you. But like we say again, before you make a choice, please consult with your doctor and so that you can make choose a method that will work for you and that will not expose you to any health risk. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Please um, subscribe to this uh, station for 
videos, more informative videos on our life, life topics generally. We'll be discussing so many challenges, psychological issues about life that we run from time to time. We'll be sharing experiences, but I can assure you, whatever we do on this channel is going to bring information and knowledge your way, going to enrich you intellectually. So please subscribe, let us know what you think about uh, our videos. Ask your questions in the comment section. Give suggestions of topics you want us to discuss and we'll get back to you. Thank you for listening and from Dr. Blessing and Tamo 8, bye-bye, have a beautiful day.